Am I the a-hole for telling my sister I won't be asking our dad to go above and beyond for her? My sister is getting married in a few months. She asked our dad and mom's husband to walk her down the aisle and share the father-slash-daughter dance with her. Mom left dad for her husband when I was six. My sister was seven and our brother was five. It devastated dad because he worked so damn hard and thought he had a happy marriage. Instead, his wife was cheating with a guy at work and ended up married to the guy. I never liked how things happened, and will be honest, I have never given my mom's husband much of a chance. I never really saw my mom the same way again either because of how she handled it. But my sister loves our mom's husband and considers him a second dad. So what happened is, she told our dad they were sharing the role and he was all okay. But then she asked him to put aside his hard feelings and not just share that, but deliver a toast with him. Spend a morning getting ready with him to let her have both of them there in those moments. She also wanted him to pay for a joint party, sort of like a second engagement party, where they shared a spotlight on dad's dime. He told her no. He said he loves her and he had to accept she loves mom's husband, but he still hates mom and mom's husband for what they did. And he cannot say he would be good company if he has to spend all that extra time with him. She called him selfish and said he would appreciate that mom's husband was a good father to us. When dad wouldn't give in, she asked me to talk him around. She said that if not for me, then for a man who only won over one of his three stepkids, and he will only get one chance to be included as a father and get this kind of love. I told her I loved her, but what she is asking from dad goes above and beyond, and I would not try and talk him into doing this. She told me I was hurting her. I told her she was hurting dad. That she was entitled to love mom's husband, to want what she wants, but she cannot honestly expect dad to just be okay with all this and she cannot expect me to force his hand. She called me an a-hole and said I am letting dad make this about him instead of her. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your sister is out of her mind. Congrats to her for being able to accept the changes in her life. Big congrats to you for standing your ground. Your dad is absolutely right in his feelings and should stand his ground. She's asking too much. Also, OP, your sister is wrong about your mother's husband. He hasn't been a good father. If he was, he wouldn't have been in an affair with your mother breaking up a whole damn family complete with kids. Not today, home. Since your sister is getting married and about to start her family, ask her how she would feel if her fiancé leaves her in 10 years for some broad at the office, and then 20 years later her son asks her to share the motherly duties at his wedding with a woman who helped destroy her family. Gross. You're poor dad. He sounds very generous, loving man to have even accepted her requests to share the walk. Your father is being more than gracious in sharing the walk. It seems your sister wants everyone to get along like there's no history between them. It wants to use her wedding day to bully people into how she wants them to be. It's weird because it's like her sister just wants to change history. She wants everyone to feel like a big happy family even if it isn't so. Or even just pretend. This is like some weird psychological thing going on with her. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for kicking out my daughter after what she did? I have two daughters. One is Amy, 33, and the other is Lisa, 31. Lisa got married a couple months ago. She had a hard time in life. She had surgery and got addicted to opioids at 15. She struggled through school for a while, ended up doing a crap ton of things she wasn't proud of, but once we managed to get her proper help, she was fine again. In context, the things she did whilst an addict were really bad. I'm talking ruining family reunions, causing arguments around a house, the works. One example is when Amy was graduating. Lisa didn't want to go, and insisted we both go without her. But this was when she was at the height of her addiction, so we called her grandparents to watch her, and they would take 10 minutes to get to the house. She warned us that if she went, she might cause a scene, but Amy told her to just shut up and come, and she should at least be able to sit through one of the most important moments of her life. Well, she ended up projectile vomiting all over the next two rows, then proceeded to break down and wail slash cry because of the embarrassment. I left with her whilst my husband stayed to support Amy. Obviously, her sister was furious at her and when we got home, she promised Lisa that when her graduation came, she'd ruin it for her. Lisa had been off the meds for long before her graduation and begged us to not let her sister come. We obliged and told Amy to stay at home or do something else. She was not welcome at graduation and graduation went fine. There were a ton of more incidents in the two years where she was an addict. But in the end, she got clean, went to a good college, and got a great job. She's well past her addiction now. Now, because Amy never got to ruin her sister's graduation, she's been waiting for another big life moment for her to ruin. 
If it's relevant, Amy never got to go to college, so that high school graduation was her only graduation. Lisa graduated from college, but only me and her father were able to go because of the distance. Now, the moment that Amy had dedicated herself to ruining is her wedding. Lisa is often sensitive at life events. She has some issues she's working through with a therapist on the side. She thought that Amy would be over to high school graduation issue, and Amy pretended like she was. But then, in the dressing room right before Lisa was meant to walk down the aisle, Amy took her aside and started insulting everything about her. I had gone to the bathroom at this time. She called her fat, she said her dress made her look like a pathetic, cheap woman, that her husband was constantly looking at other women's bodies. She went on and on until Lisa was on the ground in tears. Her makeup was ruined, no one was there to fix it, and the wedding was ruined. Lisa walked down the aisle still crying. After this, I told the family what Amy had done, and no one's talking to her. I kicked her out and told her not to come back, because she was a vile human being who can't let anything go. She has nowhere else to go now, because she can't afford any other house. Am I the a-hole? From the picture you've painted here, it sounds like you've alienated Amy for the last 15 years or so, while giving Lisa the extra attention and support she needed. And it sounds like you've consistently, all three of you, sided against Amy on every issue. While I never would have done what she did, I honestly can't say I wouldn't be harboring serious resentment against all three of you as well if I had been in Amy's position. You straight up said she wasn't wanted at her sister's graduation. Whatever she was feeling over the embarrassment Lisa caused her at what sounds like the only major event she's ever had to be about her, you don't think that didn't seriously compound the issue? Damn, you're the a-hole. Lisa was a 15-year-old who accidentally got addicted to opioids. A tragedy, really. And while in an incredibly vulnerable state, she made grave mistakes. But she was still only a child. Amy wasn't wanted at a graduation because she literally said she would ruin it, which could truly affect Lisa's recovery. And although you are right that Amy suffered too, at the wedding she, a 33-year-old woman, acted with such cruelty and evil, ruining her sister's wedding because she couldn't forgive something her 15-year-old sister did. Which wasn't her fault, really, getting addicted with pills given by doctor for medical reasons. While I do believe the parents are a-holes for not properly dealing with it all, she fully deserved to be kicked out. Also, I think it's worth noting that Lisa didn't want to make a scene at her sister's graduation and didn't do it on purpose for attention. Her vomiting over two rows of seating is because Amy pushed her into attending and refused to wait 10 minutes for grandparents to turn up and look after her sister, who was feeling unwell. If she were ill with norovirus or food poisoning, the same would apply. She wasn't feeling well, was pressured into attending, and predictably suffered an embarrassing accident. Not to mention, it sounds like most of the times the parents have sided with Lisa against Amy are purely because of this ongoing quest for revenge that Amy has been driven by. You're the a-hole. Not because you kicked out Amy, but because you kind of failed as a parent. Don't you realize that Amy wasn't only upset about a graduation? She can't let it go and was holding a grudge for all these years because it's not just about a graduation. Having an addict in the family causes stress, discomfort, pain, and suffering and you failed to realize the impact it had on Amy. That's on you. A lot of people here are slamming the 33-year-old for being a grown adult, but she obviously never matured. There's a lot of missing context in Opie's story. I'm sure Amy was the glass child, as someone posted above, and continued to be through adulthood. I bet Opie focuses on Lisa every time they visit, asking her about her sobriety and taking an active interest in her life and education to help her maintain sobriety. Which is great for Lisa, but I'm betting Amy did not get such attention as she didn't even get to go to college. I bet, but your sister is an addict, she needs this, was something she heard often. Both girls need deep therapy. Everyone sucks here, but Opie is a special a-hole in my opinion. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my dad that I'm not his replacement wife? My female 16 mom passed away recently. My brother, male 14, and dad are so devastated by this tragic loss, and we are all struggling. I've basically found myself handling all chores and work around the house. My brother is too traumatized, he hasn't been talking since the funeral, and my dad hasn't been lifting a finger and do a single thing. He started making requests, from cleaning the messy living room, he sleeps on a couch, to picking up dirty laundry, to doing dishes, cooking or ordering food, walking the dogs, vacuuming, doing repairs, mowing the lawn, Washing the car since my brother stopped doing it. I'm too exhausted oftentimes. Mom used to do the chores that I used to help. But I have school and after school commitments. And my dad keeps negatively commenting on how I get things done. And compare me to mom like how much time I take to make breakfast, etc. 
Yesterday, he woke me up at 6 a.m. even though he told me to skip school and wanted me to make breakfast. I scrambled eggs and prepared other dishes, then went to wake my brother up. I sat the table, and once Dad sits down, he looks at the scrambled eggs and goes, What is this? This is not the right way to make scrambled eggs. Your mother used to make perfect scrambled eggs. Did you not learn anything from her at all? How are we supposed to survive if you can't even properly make scrambled eggs? Then he looks at my brother and says, We're doomed. I snapped. I'd loudly tell him I'm not his replacement wife to expect me to do this and that for him. He looks at me stunned, and my brother rushes out immediately. Dad starts telling me how cruel and insensitive what I just said, and how out of line I was. I replied that I was too tired to make the perfect scrambled eggs my mom used to make, and that maybe if he as a parent had tried to learn, we wouldn't be suffering right now. He gets up, throws the towel, and walks out. My aunt came to visit, and when I told her she went off saying I should have never said that to my grieving dad, and that I should be ashamed of myself for talking to him like that. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Expecting your kids to help out more after losing one adult in the house is fine. Expecting them to act as another parent in the house is mistreatment. My condolences for your loss, Opie. Thank you so much for your support. It did help when mom was alive, but now it's just me doing everything around the house. I obviously cannot ask my depressed brother to help, and dad just expects everything to be done, although he doesn't work. Just don't. He's the parent. Tell him to start acting like it. If your brother gets to grieve, so do you. Don't tolerate that sexist nonsense. Your family needs grief therapy immediately. He didn't go when my uncle suggested it and stopped him from taking me and my brother, claiming that my uncle is preventing us from grieving naturally and processing our emotions in a normal way. Not today, home. There's this thing called parentification. Your tale is a textbook example. Your dad is an insensitive a-hole, and your family dynamics cannot be brushed aside with a but their grieving excuse. He lost his wife, sure. Your brother lost his mom, yes. But did you suddenly not lose your mom as well? Or does that not count because you emerged into the world with two X chromosomes? Reset your boundaries with your family, and do not allow them to overstep again, or this will be the rest of your natural life. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to pay for my husband's funeral? I know this sounds weird, but let me explain. My husband and I married in 2018 after dating for almost two years. Shortly after getting married, my mother got sick so we moved out of state so that I could take care of her. He was not too happy about this, but he moved with me. He didn't like the new state we were in, and he quickly stopped working and providing for our household. It got to the point where I was working two jobs and still caring for my mother and I was fed up. I told him that I couldn't carry on like this. He told me that he never wanted to move in the first place, and that he would be on the first flight back home. He told me he would leave the one car we had as a parting gift, when in reality I was the one paying the car notes and insurance. He left the state and I filed for a legal separation. The state I was in required that you were separated for a year before you could officially file. I waited my time and tried to get papers sent to his mother's house, the place I knew he was because I have family that told me that's where he was. He claims he never received them. My mother got better and I decided to stay because I had found a really great job that turned into an actual career. I tried on four different occasions to have him serve the papers, but he always dodged me. I got so discouraged that I gave up. I've completely moved on and I want to start anew with someone else, but this is just looming over me. I was in the process of getting a lawyer when I got a call from his aunt saying that he has passed away, and basically it's up to me to plan a funeral arrangement. I feel like this is BS. This man left me and even had a child with another woman, but I'm expected to foot the bill because I'm legally married to him even though I tried multiple times to end it? Am I the a-hole for not wanting to be part of any of it? His family wants a burial, and if this is something I have to do, I will cremate him and have his family do what they want with the ashes. I don't give a crap if they want a burial, they don't want to pay for it. Thanks in advance for the advice. Now for the top comments before the little update. Not the a-hole. Donate his body to science. Not today, home. You can play a modified version of the two card play. Card 1, they deal with all the expenses for whatever funeral they want. Card 2, you claim the body, have it sent an undisclosed mortuary where you arrange for him to be cremated, and then you have the ashes legally disposed of in a location that will remain undisclosed. Their choice. If they want to play the you're the wife card, you can do whatever you want. What they want won't matter in the least. This is the way. 
Make it very clear to them that cremation with no service is all you will pay for if they plan to force this on you. Not day home. It might be worth checking with that lawyer right now to see if you have any legal obligations, since you are still legally married. This might mean that you also have legal rights to anything like a survivor's pension or insurance or any portion of the estate if that existed. You can definitely refuse the family. You don't owe them a funeral. If you somehow have a legal obligation to pay for disposal of the body, then inform the family that you will be paying for the most basic, no frills cremation package with no service, no wake, no plot, no headstone. They are welcome to pay for any additional services that they want, even though if they could afford this, they probably wouldn't be reaching out to you. On the upside, a cremation might be cheaper than lengthy divorce proceedings. Update and a little more info. I've decided to get in touch with a lawyer to see my options. We didn't have a lot of assets. We sold our house before we moved out of state. So as far as I know, we didn't have a will or anything. But if there is something I do get, I'm almost certain it's not much and I would rather it go towards his daughter. She's not even one, and I spoke with her mother and she was under the impression that he was divorced. They had even filled out paperwork to get married, but she left it up to him to file it since she was pregnant and tired, and of course he never did it. I just want to cut all ties with this family and live my life. I don't want to fight family members for money, so I will give them one last time to make their own arrangements, and if they refuse, I will do what I want with the body.